I have a question here about uh, dating versus courtship. Uh, could you? I'm going to read this comment here. This is a shared privately message, so I'm not going to tell you who it's from or anything. I protect the identity there. But it says, uh, hello, could you please do a study on dating courting? Should a Christian date? If so, how? What should a Christian look for in a partner? How should a Christian view their partner? How intimate should a relationship be before marriage? Should a virgin like myself ever consider marrying a non-virgin, divorced or otherwise? I know that you already did a study on marriage that covers some of this, but a whole study about getting married would be great. I'm only 18, so it would really be a blessing to me. Thank you and God bless. So, really, really good questions there. I mean, this, I read that and I thought, wow, i really got to do a video on this. And uh, so I'm going to answer that in this quick little video here. This isn't going to be a real in-depth study because, to be very frank with you, uh, the Bible really doesn't say anything about dating or courting. The words aren't in there. Okay, now, now I shouldn't say the Bible doesn't say anything about that subject because there are some definite things that it does, advice that the Bible does give. But the words dating and courting are not there. And we have this modern idea that you see somebody that you like and you say, boy, I'm very attracted to them physically. And so I'm going to ask them out and we're going to go out and do worldly things like go to a movie or go out to eat at a restaurant or go play miniature golf or whatever you want to do. Go fishing, go to the beach, go whatever. And we have this idea that you do that, and if you get along good with the person and you, you know, fall in love, then you get married. Um, that's not the practice that a Christian should do, all right? Uh, as a Christian, you have to realize when you get married, uh, the only way that your marriage is ever going to succeed, ever going to be happy, is if the two of you are working for Jesus Christ at some capacity. I don't mean you have to be full-time ministry to have a happy marriage, okay? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there's an old thing a preacher told me one time back when I was a single man. He said, marriage is like a pyramid. Down here at this corner, you have the man. Over here, you have the woman. God's at, top, at the top of that pyramid. And I, you know, I don't get all excited and say I'm teaching pyramidology or something. Okay, it's a triangle, if you will. All right. But you have God up at the top, man down here, woman down here. Now what happens? As the two of them move closer to God, what's happening? They're moving closer together. Okay? And when you're doing the will of the Lord, you're in the perfect will of the Lord, the two of you are very, very close together. See? And when you get to heaven, then the two of you are one. All right? So, but my whole point is there, you have to have God at the center of the thing. So then how would you, you work that out with dating or courting? Okay? Well, you need to make it about spiritual things. Uh, that's something that I made the mistake on, you know, many, many times. Uh, different girls that I uh, dated and things like that in my back before I got married, it would be about worldly things. Oh, does she like the kind of music I like? There's uh, in, in turn, and not I don't mean good Christian hymns. I'm talking about my favorite bands or something like this. You know, back before I was saved. Um, does she like the kind of movies I like? Does she like the kind of cars I like or whatever else? That's stupid. You know, that's a dumb way to do things. Now, what you need to do is you need to talk about the things of the Lord. Okay. But how do you get started? Let's see the first part of it here. Um, should a Christian date? Well, uh, define dating. Okay. I mean, again, there's a lot of brethren that say you shouldn't date, but you can court. Well, <laughs> The problem is courting is not in the Bible either. The word courting isn't in there. You know, uh, should you date? Should you court? Well, that depends on how it's defined. Um, you can't really set any rules there um, as far as uh, what is dating, what is courting. Um, you can, I think that the best thing to do is if, you, if you're a young man and you see a young woman uh, at the fellowship that you're part of, you know, and, and you meet this young lady, uh, I think it would be a good idea to uh, talk to her in the presence of her parents. And, uh, you know, if you see that there's interest there and things, well, I would, I would talk to her father and get to know him and say, you know, I would seriously like to court your daughter. I would, I would like to um, get to know her and um, go through it that way. Now, again, you know, I realize you're going to have some problems there because you might not, see a girl that has a Christian father. 
You know, you might get a girl that's saved, but her dad's lost, her family's lost. What do you do in that situation? You know, so I st still think you should go to the father at that point in time. He might hate your guts, but at least you're going to him and saying, "Hey, I want to do the right thing here by your daughter." And a lot of times that'll actually be a really good witness uh, to the father. A lost father gets a young man coming and saying, "I don't want to do do the right thing by your daughter here. I want to be respectful to her." Um, but the point is, you need to have the family involved as much as possible. All right, show respect and honor to the parents because spiritually they are the father's the head of that young lady. Okay. Now, of course, I'm talking to teenagers here. All right, this uh, individual here is 18 years old. Now, what do you do when you get up into later years? Say you're in your late 20s or in your 30s. What do you do then? Uh, well, then the opinions of the parents don't matter quite as much. It's still there, but you might have the young woman living on her own. In which case, what do you do? You know, she might be estranged from her family or whatever else. See, I, you know, I can't say this is a hard, fast rule. It always has, has to be this way. It isn't always going to work out like that. But the main thing that you want to focus on here is keep it spiritual. All right. What are you trying to find here? I mean, if you're just into casual dating and just having a good time and going out and having fun and see how many girls that you can date, well, you're not really doing it spiritually. You're just being worldly. And if you're a young lady and you're very attractive or whatever and you're just seeing how many guys' attention you can get, again, you're going to get burned, all right? You play with fire, you will be burned. And uh, some young man might force himself on you sometime because you've, you're pushing the envelope a little bit too far, you know, and dressing a little bit immodestly there and, and whatever else. You need to be real careful about that. I mean, you got to realize, young ladies especially, that uh, the majority of young men out there are, have been looking at pornography for many times years. Um, I can say I've seen children as young as maybe 9 or 10 years old um, talking about pornography. I mean, hardcore pornography, full sexual intimacy. Okay. And there are many kids that are in their, you know, 10 years old and things in that age range, and they're already sexually active. So uh, that's what you're dealing with out there. So be real careful. But uh, should a Christian date? If so, how? Well, I kind of said that already. You know, um, if you meet a young girl or you're out someplace and you see this girl and you're a young man and you, and you look and you say, well, she's very, very attractive. And that there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Don't look and say, I want to find the ugliest girl that I can find just because I think she's a good person inside. There's nothing wrong with physical attraction, okay? But again, make sure that that's not the main thing, okay? She's pretty, but now let me talk to her. Let me just give you some little scripture here real quick just while I'm thinking about this. Uh, in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse, turn to it here. I think this is one of the best pieces of advice, and I tried and tried and tried to find a girlfriend and wife for, for a long time, and I heard this as advice, and I thought, you know what, I am just going to do that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you show the Lord that you're serious about serving him and doing his will, and you seek first his righteousness, all the things that you desire, the desires of your heart, will be granted to you in, in due time. Now, I don't mean the lusts of your heart, okay? If you're lusting after being a millionaire, God's not going to give you that in due time, all right? I'm talking about those sincere desires of your heart. You want to be a, uh, a married man. You want to have a, a family, things like that. The best thing to do is seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all those things will be added to you. Go next in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. You say, well, then I should uh, spend many, many years, you know, in studying the scriptures and do missionary work for 10 years before I decide to marry. You know, I'll marry when I'm 35, 40 years old or something. Well, not always. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. 
Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Okay, and then you jump down to verse 9 there, and it says, you know, why, do you, why is there this urgency to marry? Verse 9, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Um, if you have a need, a sexual desire there, which most people do, um, if you have that need, then you better take care of it. Because if you don't, you're going to be falling into pornography and falling into all kinds of other lusts and sins. Okay. And when I say take care of it, I mean wait for the right person to get married to. Okay. I'm not saying go out and fornicate with the first person you meet. No, no. I'm not saying that. And I'm not advocating masturbation either. All right. Just going to be real straight with you on that one. Also a very bad thing to get into. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Now I teach this as instruction in righteousness for, um, it, or not instruction in righteousness, but actually doctrine for not fellowshipping together in the terms of worshiping the Lord. That's what I believe 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18 is about. But of course, instruction in righteousness, it's there also for the thing of who you're courting or dating, who you want to get married to. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness. And of course, in terms of fellowship, you know, when you're worshiping the Lord, very, very true. But it's also very true for if you're getting married. All right. You don't want to marry an unbeliever. So how do you determine if they're a believer or not? You know, a good standard, a good thing to take on a date you see some young woman, or if you're a young woman, some young guy comes over and he asks you out and stuff like that. And he says, uh, you know, I'd like to come sit with you on your front porch of your parents' house and just talk to you, get to know you. Or sit in the living room there with the parents in the home or, or whatever. They show up for the date. And you pull out the Bible. And you set the Bible down. Watch how they react. If they're like, what are you doing with that thing? You know, and they're kind of like repulsed by it, like, what, what is that? You know, what are you bringing a Bible for? You know, bad sign. If they are like, oh, wow, is that a King James Bible? It better be a King James Bible, you know. Good sign, see? And you say, you know what? I'd like to pray before we have our date or before we start just talking and getting to know each other. I'd like to pray and ask the Lord's will to be done. Not, you know, God, if, if this is the woman I'm supposed to marry, you know what, don't talk marriage right away. But just simply look at it as a fellowship, as, as a chance to fellowship with a, with a sister if you're a guy or a brother if you're a girl. And talk about the things of the Lord. And see, what is your goal in life? You know, what, what do you want to do with your life? What, is, what do you feel God's calling is on your life? And if they really are deep and talking about the things of the Lord, that's a good thing. It's a very good thing. If it's kind of like, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, maybe I'll serve God someday. I don't, I don't really know. Okay. The things of this world are never going to satisfy anybody. So if you're relying on the things of this world to bring you happiness in your possible future marriage, it isn't going to work. Continuing here. What should a Christian look for in a partner? Are they saved? Okay. Yes, physical attraction is an important thing, but are they saved? That's very important. Okay. How should a Christian view their partner? Okay. And again, there, if you start out talking about the things of the Lord, you start out talking about the Bible and praying together and things, maybe even go witnessing together. I think it was uh, one of Sam Gipps' sons said that how he was going out on this outreach thing with young people and stuff, and they'd go out, and he said that there was this young girl that would go with them. And he said he'd, you know, he'd be out there and they'd be preaching on the street and handing out tracts. And he said he keeps looking over at this young girl and she's handing tracts to people and, and ha passing out gospel tracts and witnessing. And that young man, he looked at her and he was like, huh, you know, I wasn't really even thinking about this dating thing, but that's a pretty good quality to have here. This, this young lady's really fervent for the things of the Lord. And they ended up getting married. You know, and they're probably very happily married. You know, so that's the kind of things that you should look for. You know, if you are saved, you 
really need to make sure that you're going to marry a saved person who is like-minded. Okay? You know, and another thing I'll bring up here real quickly, and that is the thing of, I do believe, you know, when you study the whole thing of, you go back into the Old Testament, and the Lord's saying to the Jews, to the nation of Israel, don't marry other kindreds. Okay? Now, he wrote that for a reason. And I realized God was dealing with the nation of Israel. They were a chosen people. He's saying, don't mingle your seed with others. Don't, don't mess around with outlandish women. King Solomon did, and it messed him up. The outlandish women messed him up. But, you know, instruction in righteousness for a New Testament Christian, you say, is there an open command saying, thou shalt not marry somebody of another kindred? No, there's no open command like that. But let me say this. Instruction in righteousness, when you get married, you want to have as much as is in common with that person you're marrying as possible. And if you have the same culture, the same you know kindred and things like that, you're going to be doing a lot better. You know, you want the two of you to function as a single unit. You don't want two opposing sides, right? So that's another thing. You call me a racist, call me whatever you want to call me, whatever. But I'm telling you, instruction and righteousness here, people, it's very important, all right? Um, how intimate should a relationship be before marriage? Well, uh, how long can you keep your finger in a fire without getting burned? Uh, here's an idea. Avoid putting your finger into the fire. All right. What am I saying? I am saying don't mess around with a lot of physical t contact and things like that. Okay. I'm not going to go so far as to say you can never hold hands as you're crossing the road or something like that. Or you, you can't, you know, you have to sit with a, with a piece of plywood in between you or something like that so that there's no body contact or something. I'm not saying that. You know, use, use some sound judgment here. But if you're starting to kiss and you're starting to feel and touch and things like that, and at first it's on the leg and then it's on the shoulders and it's, you're dealing with fire. You're playing with fire. All right. I'd be real careful about that. Okay. The best thing to do is abstain from that. The Bible said there in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's not good for a man to touch a woman. All right. So you're better off, better off err on the side of caution. Okay. If you're a young man, be respectful to the young lady. There will be plenty of time for physical intimacy after marriage. Save it for then. All right. Stay focused on the things of the Lord. And I'll tell you what else. When you're talking about the things of the Lord, your mind's not going to be thinking so much about sex. Okay? Um, should a virgin, like myself here, he says here, ever consider marrying a non-virgin, divorced or otherwise? Okay, very another very good question. And let me just say this. Turn your Bible to Romans chapter 1. Um, there are different types of virgins. And I believe the, the, when the Bible talks about a uh, virgin, I think it's talking about you know, physical contact, if you've, that you've never had physical contact with someone of the opposite sex. But uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 29 through 31, you can read it. We're not going to go over that. But it talks about fornication you know, and stuff there in verse 29. But look at verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now you can be a real hypocrite as a young man or even young women nowadays. And you can say, I've kept my body pure, but your mind is impure because you've looked at pornography. And most Hollywood movies are pornography. They're soft core porn, R-rated movies and stuff like that. You'll see body parts in them. All right, so it's soft core pornography. And again, it's putting that stuff into your mind. You watch television, a lot of the sitcoms, they're fornicating with a new partner every week. You know, I mean, it's insane. Again, how pure is your mind really? You might be pure in body, but you might be very impure in your thought life. So if you are, and you're going to judge a woman because she committed fornication before she got saved or something like that, You'd be better off to stay away from, or you better, you know, get your own life in check there. But let me just give you a little bit of advice on that. Um, I met a girl the one time, and uh, we got to talking and things, and I said, you know, I was a virgin there, and I, and I said to her, you know, are you? And she said, no. She said, I've been 
in the university and things. And and uh, and this this was, and she said that she was with a guy had fornication, and then another guy she lived with him for a while, and they they were fornicating regularly. And she said it was a lot of fun and it was very good. But uh, I stopped, and now I'm a second time virgin. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, because see, she was doing that before she got, or you know, she was doing this as a quote unquote saved woman, a saved young lady. So, and she had no remorse about it. She wasn't like, boy, I really messed up there. She was just like, eh, not a big deal. That's a problem. Okay. Now, if you are a young man and some young woman comes along and she says, yeah, I did commit fornication and I'm very, very sorry for it. It was before I got saved or it was right after I got saved or something. I really messed up. Um, boy, I, I don't know what to say. I just, I really feel bad about that. And you look at her and you say, okay, she's right in all the other things. She believes the King James Bible. She dresses modestly. She's really sanctifying her life. She's, she'd be a great helpmeet. She can do, you know, she's got qualities of being a keeper at home. Um, She's not all career-driven and everything else. That's another big thing. Young women shouldn't be career-driven. Okay, you should learn to be keepers at home because a keeper at home is going to make a better environment for the man as he's going out and winning, you know, breadwinning, you know, so to speak, earning an income. So, but, you know, you see this young woman, she messed up. She's repented of that. She's sorry for that. Uh, well, you can just look at it this way. If God forgave her, can you forgive her? If her sins under the blood have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ, can you forgive her? Can you overlook that? And young lady out there, if you're watching and you meet a young man and he says, yeah, I did kind of mess up there and I, I did kind of have fornication with this other girl here and, and I'm really sorry about that. And, and you can tell that he's definitely changed. And you, when you're out in public and stuff, you aren't, you know, walking around and seeing him look at girls and stuff and kind of, oh boy, yeah. see, you see, he's really a good young man. You say, well, we're not going to have the kind of marriage that we could have had if we were both virgins. But yeah, I'm aware of that. But brethren, you're going to be defiled different ways in this life. Okay. And if you can find somebody who's a good Christian and you pray about it and the Lord gives you the green light, go for it, then do it. It's just as simple as that. I mean, you know, what are you supposed to do? Just anybody that has fornication, you just say, well, you're done, finished. I can't, nobody will ever have you. But, um, and divorced. Divorced there, I should say that. Uh, divorced, that can be tricky. I've known in situations, especially if there's a child involved, that can make a lot of problems. Okay? And if a young woman is not scripturally divorced, or if a young man is not scripturally divorced, they're the one that's committed fornication, that's it, done. That's a big difference. You have some young person that goes out and they had a one-night fling or something like that, that's still bad. But somebody who's divorced, uh, eww, that's real bad, very bad. And if that person is the one who caused the divorce, they fornicated, uh, broke that marriage, don't have anything to do with them. Okay, I do feel very strongly on that one. Uh, it says here, I know that you already did a study on marriage that covers some of this, but a whole study about getting married would be great. I'm only 18, so it would be a real blessing to me. Thank you and God bless. So that pretty much answers the questions. Um, like I said, there's, there's not really a whole lot in the Bible. I mean, as far as marriage and divorce and remarriage, uh, there's the thing of betrothal in your King James Bible and betrothal in the Bible is is our modern day engagement as a perversion of that and engagements are kind of not a real serious thing it's kind of like they're still fair game as long as you know they're not married yet yeah yeah, yeah no no um, when you get betrothed you've made the commitment already to marry that person and to be true to that person uh, that's why Joseph he's betrothed to Mary and he finds out that she's with child and he's like well, I'm going to have to put her away privately, or, you know, privately. And uh, I don't want to make a fool out of her or get her in trouble or anything. I'm just going to have to put her away. I, I got to leave her, you know. I mean, betrothal is a very serious thing. 
So, and I'm not saying if you're dating that you're betrothed. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when you make that decision and you say, the young man, when you say to the young woman, young woman, don't say this to the, to the man. <laughs> okay, it's the place of the young man to do this. But the young man says to the woman, um, I would like to know if you would marry me. Okay, and at that point she says, yes. Yes, I've been praying for that. Yes, I will marry you. You're betrothed, and that's a very serious thing. You need, people need to start taking marriage a lot more seriously. That's a big problem. And the reason they don't take it seriously is because they don't start out seriously. They don't start out and say, hey, you know what? I want to find somebody that believes the Bible. I want to find somebody that will study the Bible with me. Uh, my wife and I, since we've been married, just shortly after the time of us getting married, we started reading a chapter a day every morning. You know, right after we got married, we'd read, it, read a chapter a day. I'd read the first three verses. She reads the next three verses. I read the next three verses. We do that the whole way to the end of the chapter. And if we get to the end of the chapter and it's a multiple of three, well, then whoever read it last is done. But if it goes and there's two more verses or one more verse, then we'll read it together out loud. Read the thing together. And uh, it's been a real blessing. We've, we've kept that tradition. It doesn't matter if one of us is sick, headache, whatever, very tired, or you know whatever the deal is. We have never broke that. Uh, not one day. And I thank the Lord for that. So it's a good practice to get, in, to get into. And of course, when we were courting, so to speak, um, we talked about the Bible all the time. I mean, we just, Scripture, 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 Scripture. And... Uh, that was how I knew, you know, yeah, I, she's the one. Because I realized uh, as a single man, I was, I was in ministry, I was preaching. A lot of my videos on YouTube were done when I was a single man. I, did, I was um, married in 2012. And uh, so a lot of my videos are before 2012. I mean, I've, I've been on YouTube for, um, well, since 2008, November 2008. So a lot of my videos were done before I got married. And, uh, you know, I forget what point I was going to make by that now. <laughs> Sorry, I've been working on sermon notes all day. My brain's kind of... Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I did a lot of stuff on YouTube and I was... I was oh, I know what I was going to say. And I realized if I meet the wrong girl, she's going to destroy my ministry. And... If I meet the right girl, she's going to help my ministry. She's going to make the ministry even stronger. And I realized I'm going to have to be super, super careful here who I marry. Because if I marry the wrong woman, my ministry is shot. My ministry is over. You know? And if you marry the wrong person, your life with the Lord is going to go downhill. I don't mean you're going to lose your salvation or anything like that, but it is going to go downhill. It's going to get worse. So you need to be very careful about who you decide to court. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video. I hope I answered your question. Again, um, not a really detailed study here, but like I said, the, the Bible really doesn't say a whole lot in terms of young people, you know, coming together and the proper protocol and everything else, because there's so much variation there. Uh, there's so many things that can be different and whatever else. So I guess that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.